Here's a very exciting find for collectors of microcomputer memorabilia. We actually purchased this in 1981, almost 30 years ago. The little sign down here at the bottom says that it's the first microcomputer development system and 1702A programmer. That's not quite the case. This is an MCB8-10, which uses the 8-bit microprocessor, the 8008. And this is a development system which allows you to test software and hardware and program the 1702A EEPROM and then put it in your own dedicated system. Let's take a close look now at this label down here at the, the bottom. The sign says, own your very own piece of antique Silicon Valley, the original first microprocessor development system and EEPROM programmer. Price was $125. This was in 1981, bought in one of the famous electronic surplus houses in Silicon Valley. There were many of them during the late 70s and early 80s, and they were a lot of fun Here's to Here's the CPU there. card from the 8-bit development system. Here's the 8-bit the uh, processor, the 8008, 4 kilobytes of random access read-write memory. These are 1101. Uh, solid state memory chips. And back here there's eight sockets for the 1702A EEPROM, electronically programmable read-only memory. So you could put in up to two kilobytes of EEPROM and test your program. If it wasn't right, you could rewrite the program, reprogram the EEPROMs. Once they're programmed, they're permanent. You can re erase them with UV light. But it was permanent, and if it worked well, then you could put it in your system and use it uh, for your final system. Let's take a look at the motherboard for the MCB8-10. Here are the sockets for the CPU, the prom, EEPROM programmer. Here's a little socket where you plug in your 1702A to program it. This cable is very interesting because this cable is designed to go to a teletype, to plug directly into a teletype so you can use a teletype as an I.O. device if you have the right software here. So this, this computer was interfaced to a teletype, one of the output ports going over to the teletype. This unit has five output ports, five input ports, and lights indicating about every state of the look at some of the things here on this motherboard. Here's a socket to plug in your 1702A program, uh, EEPROM to program it. Down along the lower part of the chassis are switches to allow you to set up the address, the data, and control the computer. Here's the switches to enable, disable. Here are the eight switches to do all the functions, set up the address, the data, and the interrupts. You see the input port some status lights up here, the 16-bit address lights, another input port, there's a single step switch, an interrupt switch, another output port, another output port, and over to the right you see an interrupt switch and the AC switch to turn on the unit. I.O. code, Flags, like I said, status lights for most all the functions of the microprocessor unit. Here's the original receipt. You see the date of 1981 on there. We also paid 125 for this unit, but we got a Kim board with it also, microprocessor board for $10. Um, I'll tell you, those of you that are collecting microcomputers, it's important to keep all the documentation, letters, records of phone calls, and everything you do with each unit you collect. It makes for an interesting collection. And here's the description of the unit. If you'd like to read this, just stop the video and you'll have time to read it. A lot of wonderful things that we acquired with the 4-bit and 8-bit development systems. Here's an actual course that this gentleman took on the 4-bit microprocessor taught by Intel and just loaded with wonderful documentation and, and just uh, great information historically.
It's been a real pleasure to show you and tell you about this MCB 8-10, the first Intel 8-bit microcomputer development system, which we have here in the LCF Historical Microcomputer Collection in Floyd, Virginia. This is Dee Wallace of LCF Group. Thank you for watching this informative little video. Have a good day.